Guys, here she is, and it looks really good now. Got a couple projects. So you see this one, that should have been the last video. And I just got this one back. So this one, we gotta get it running first. Then I will be able to uh, test it before I go ahead and powder coat everything. But there's not a lot of people that remember this one. Is it gonna make it? This one is the copper one. I haven't worked on in a while. That's the one that we're messing with today. So this has been sitting in a box for, I don't know how long. I was supposed to get this powder coated a long time ago. Finally got around to getting it powder coated. And it's been sitting here powder coated in a bunch of tubs. I just haven't got around to putting it together. So I went all out. Brake master cylinder, throttle, the foot shift. I mean, look at that. I can't wait to get that on. So here it is, the gunmetal gray with the copper accents. You can see the arms down here and you can see everything else right here that I gotta finish unraveling. So now I gotta figure out where I put the bearings for these at and uh, go from there. I got two packages, all balls and Jim's bearing. As far as the transfer case, I think I was able to get all these parts on Partzilla. Now let's get over to the press and get these press in. I guess we're gonna start with the rear end. I got the rear div put together, the 350D. Whatnot, you can see the Honda Bond starting to come through a little bit. I'm trying to keep this thing as tight as possible. Usually a O-ring that goes right here before you install. install your axle tube. I don't have an O-ring. I'm just gonna put some Honda Bond around the edge, put it down and zip it up. Okay, don't judge me. I forgot to get these bolts powder coated. I think what I was supposed to do was order brand new bolts. That way they would be black. And I didn't do it. I didn't do that for the front diff and I didn't do it for the rear diff either. So I'll get that taken care of later, but for now, this is gonna be good enough. All right, just getting parts in one by one. I know this video has been taking forever and this bike has been going on for like two years now. But anyway, here are the axles. So you got the copper, the gray and the copper again. So here's what I got going on now. And as you can see, this is really coming together. That silver axle definitely breaks up the copper. I'm gonna explain what I got going on right now. So I got the whole bike is actually on its own weight right now. That way the suspension will compress under its own weight. Um, so what I'm doing is trying to get the alignment as even as I can. And as you can see, I have just a little bit of play right there, which honestly is not enough to bother me. And you come to this side and it's the same. Well, this is a little bit more. I'm gonna see how close I can get this side before I bother taking that side apart again. Let's show this to you guys real quick. A good lift, if it's done right, if you got your angles set right, no matter what angle you're at, that camber is going to stay the same. I don't know if you can tell that. Only whenever you turn, is it gonna come way out of whack she's sitting level so now what i'm gonna do is uh first i got these brake cables tightened up i need to go ahead and tighten them up here i left them loose so i can rotate them as needed so i can go ahead and tighten those connections up and then go ahead and start messing with the tie rods so we can get our toe right went ahead and threw on the front bumper and i got the tie rods on i, I think i got the tie rods on as straight as i could man it is so hard filming and doing stuff um guys i just had to take a break i just from the camera i went ahead and just the rear end is all the way on now the spaces are in and as you can see i'm already taking <laughs> the tires off there because this is the one that they're going on and believe it or not as soon as i hooked up the fuel line i primed the carburetor and as soon as i primed it guys check this out this floor hasn't been started in a year and a half <laughs> That is insane. Everything's good. 
now it's just time to put the tires on. The only thing that I don't know what I did with my snorkel. So I have to redo the snorkel. I have to rerun the vent lines. Um, but everything is good to go. Other than that, this thing is ready to shake down before anybody says anything about it. Yes, I know the motor is hideous. I mean, I cleaned it the best that I could. Reason being is I don't want to be like, oh, I just spent three grand on a big board kit and all this other stuff. I don't want to build the motor fully and then go sink it and then have to turn around and put another top end on it. So this will keep me from this bike being a trailer queen until it is time to put time into building the motor. But yeah, this thing's ready. So let's go ahead and finish getting the tires off of this monster. I don't have the right size socket to get the hub off. So what I'm going to do is just put jack stands under the portals for now, get the tires off of this bad boy. So that's awesome. Now this fuller will be done. That fuller is already done. Excuse the mess guys, I'm telling you, I've just been going ham. So that's two fullers done. And then we can start working on the last one. And then we can finally get to the three wheelers if y'all have seen the three wheelers on my YouTube short. Only, only the haters will say it's not gonna fit. If anyone was wondering, this is how you change your diff fluid. So the axle is like at the right angle to actually get the proper amount of fluid in the diff. You just have to take the tires off and jack the back all the way up. Real quick, I just wanna show you guys how to trim it. So first of all, to clear these tires, you have to have the strong made floorboards. Take your supports out i zip tie these which i know looks a little janky and then i self tap screw with these little washers into the strong made floorboards and not going anywhere here's what the stock side looks like that needs to be trimmed see you can see it's rubbing and that's the same thing this was on a six and a half seven inch lift this is an eight inch lift 10 inch stretch which is actually what this one was supposed to be when it had these i know it's confusing when it had these tires on it um, so I actually had to cut the strong made floorboard. All right guys, so I'm gonna show y'all what I'm doing now. And I was supposed to have this custom made, but the company that I was gonna get do it, he's not doing it anymore. So I'm making this work, but it's actually going a little bit smoother than I thought. So these are the Haze Fab little brackets that you can buy, but as you see, they're cheap Amazon lights. You can get these for like six bucks and then they're pretty much making money off crafting that bracket. So. If you take that bracket, flip it inside out, it's gonna end up on the other side. So if you take that bracket, flip it upside down and rotate it upside down again, see this used to be the top edge of that side. So if you do that, take a one inch L bracket, you can see pretty much what it's gonna look like. You're only gonna see rigid on the bottom light, but that's fine as long as you can see the ring. So as you can see, uh, you're gonna be able to see the the light rings around all of these and I got it as center as possible No trimming involved at first I tried trimming this side So this was the grill that was on that bike I took the grill off because it was cracked So I have a new grill that I got from Greg jr. Those on the 300 club know what I'm talking about and I have this grill That is gonna stay on here. I'm just using the brand new grill as a mock-up Well right now I'm using the old grill as a mock-up but i'll end up using the new grill here before too long just to make sure i can get these to fit the mounting points are at the top and on the bottom and the l brackets are swooping up if that's what you want to call it or the mounting brackets are swooping up and then you can see i have the one inch l bracket going on top and going on top so now i have a good spot to just drill a hole and make these brackets work like i said that's the best that I can do, but hey, it looks like it's gonna work. So let me get these things mounted and see what happens. That is insane. I am very happy with how that came out. Whenever you turn them on for the very first time, these scene lights are like 500 lumens a piece, which is, is bright enough to see where you're going, the light bar, because it doesn't blind anybody. It's a SAE approved fog light. So the beam is very focused on that light bar. If anything, these lights are blinding me more than the light bar is. So that's good because the light bar is actually also aimed down just a little bit as you can see that. So what you do is these lights change modes as you switch the headlights on and off. So you flip it and then it turns into like a halo mode, which 
honestly it's like the same brightness you can't tell the difference in brightness so i don't know why they do that but anyway that's that so the brights on the handlebar actually just controls the backlight and brightness setting on the light bars you go back to brights and then there's a lot brights on that switch it real fast and then it puts it in halo mode and for those that don't know the back does have the rigid light which has been there for a long time. For those that haven't seen the previous videos, you hit the brake. I actually have a brake light on there. And then up here, if you push where the reverse light used to go, that is a button, a reverse light. Hell yes. Guys, this is, this is where a lot of my time goes. And this is what takes these projects so long. And that's custom sleeving all of these wires so individually going into two individually going into two tying together and then going into a quick connect that's on the bike already so i've already been here for 20 minutes so this is what takes so long to do these projects and uh if you appreciate the work and quality that i'm trying to attempt here i'm not going to say it's perfection but I'm, I'm trying my best just be sure to leave a like so not my best work i've done better but i am happy with how this came out um when i say not my best work there's a little bit of a gap right there a little bit right there as well but i'm not going to be too hard on myself no one's easily going to be able to see this um but if, if you were to glance it you see that it's sleeved so hey i'm gonna go ahead and take it back off of this grill and go ahead and mount the lights back up in the fuller and plug it in excuse a little bit of dirt but now you can see that wire is sleeved and then it just plugs into the harness when i first snorkeled this bike it had the stock air box in it well now it has the metal one where you just have a boot that comes out so this one is too long so it's still gonna fit on this boot right here it comes down and around what i'm gonna do is since this is actually too long now i went ahead and got two street 45 lined them up opposite at 180 of each other the measurements are in line but you can you can see what i'm trying to accomplish here i'm trying to come around the head so this just pops in now there's a hose clamp on it used to that was further back so all i really need to do is cut this and really just see where i'm gonna have to end up cutting it on the other side so let me go and do that i'm still alone so i'm just gonna make a mark right here where my thumb is and then cut that and then that should go right in there she is ready to go on underneath here you can see where i get a little bit creative i got a short 90 another short 90 and then a piece of pipe and then a 90 degree boot which comes right here that's what allows me to take this whole front plastic piece off without having to even take the snorkels off of the uh, plastic pieces. Used to, I'd have to unthread it. I use threaded fittings that sandwich in between the plastics. So I have these little differential bellows, but they're too big for the 300 vent. It's a quarter inch hole. So what I did was, since I'm running vent lines for the carburetor, I took that tubing off, shoved it inside. See if you can see. Shoved it inside of here. And now, it is a tight fit. Some people would probably still rather have the vent line. I am just going to call this good as it is right there. I don't know how I feel about it, but I think that that looks a lot better than a piece of tubing. So I'm gonna roll with it like that. So I'll say this. Next time I get one of these air boxes before I powder coat it, I'm gonna add my touch to it. I already got the crankcase vent right there. I mean, yeah, I know the hose clamp is not black and that's because I had to order some more. But also since I'm doing a big board kit on this bike, um, and so it's gonna come back down pretty soon, I'm gonna worry about it when it comes back down. The carb and the gas tank need to be vented. So everything else has either got, exalt, uh, got diff bellows on it. So I gotta order one more bellow. I got this bellow right there. For the front diff i just need to order one more bellow for the transfer case right there guys check these things out they are mounted on this rainy day but man i can't wait to get them slapped on my oh my is this just looking good as you can see the copper on the back kind of breaks up all the gray that you see and, and then from this side it just adds gray instead of all the copper let's get the rest of these tires on guys 
here she is and it looks really good now my goodness just look at that just ties in with the racks ties in with the shocks the axles man that came out really good so i didn't want too much copper so the the barrels are copper the faces are some kind of gray hell i don't remember but guys just check this thing out look at that the back looks great because i had a lot of gray going on the wheels bring back some of the copper so that is awesome i can't wait to see this thing out in the sun and see what it's going to look like but i am very very impressed now